Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Monroe Laser Engraving. Uh, today we have a rush job and we need to get two names onto this 24 karat gold bracelet and we need to do it right now. To start our work today, just like any other day, we need to jump right into Illustrator. So I'm going to go ahead and get that open so that you guys can see what we're doing. So as usual, the first thing we're going to want to do is create a new file. This file is going to be my standard, which is five inches wide by three inches tall. It's just what I use for most things. I have a good idea of how that is going to fit on, you know, a variety of different materials, objects, laser machines. It all, you know, five by three is a really standard size. So I use that for most things. With our project open here, we just need to defer to our order form. So on the order form, we can clearly see we want two names, Tony and Greg with a heart on the front and the back. Uh, and there's our font choice right there, Callisto. So we'll remember that. So let's make sure that we do this the right way. One thing that we want to do really quick is take a measurement of the bracelet so that we know what space our name has to fit into. That way it's right in Illustrator and then when we bring it into EasyCAD, we know it'll be right in EasyCAD. We don't have to resize anything. So um, this is one of my all-time favorite calipers right here. Um, this one was actually given to me by my mentor when I worked at his laser shop as a parting gift when we left. Um, and there is no better caliper than this one. I love it. It is the best of the best. Uh, it's by Twin Cal here. Uh, if you want to pick one of these up, link in the description. As usual, shopping there helps the channel out. Appreciate that. But right now we're going to take a measurement. So I'm going to turn it on. We're going to use millimeters because millimeters, in my opinion, are more accurate. And we need to be accurate because we're working with 24 karat gold, right? So let's get a height first of all. Looks like we're about seven millimeters exactly that's awesome so 7.02 millimeters uh, which i'm typing into the width let's get that into height there we go and a quick width so something about the width with fiber lasers we don't have a lot of play on our, our our focus right where we focus is where we are focused and there is not a lot of play in that so we can't dip all the way from this high point here at the center uh, all the way down to the low point. We're not going to make that so we need to kind of make a judgment call on How much focus play we're going to get? I'm going to say that we are going to lose about two-thirds So this middle third here will, will be in focus the outer two-thirds this third and this third are not going to be in play So when we take our measurement, I'm going to uh, Assume that we are going to lose about a third of that right there So I'm going to just take that measurement without it now and it looks like without that third, we've got about 17 millimeters of width to play with. So that's what we're gonna put into our box here. 17 millimeters, great. So, back into the software. So now that we're back into software, we have our seven by 17 millimeter box right here. Uh, so we know that everything needs to fit inside of this box. We are going to first do Tony. Tony is easy, T-O-N-Y. Uh, they want Callisto. And they want small caps. So we're gonna jump into character, small caps. Excellent, and there we go. So we'll do object expand because we want the shape of the text. We don't want actual text. And then we'll just maximize our usage of the box within reason. I say within reason, you always want a little bit of buffer space. You want some cushion space. If it's edge to edge, it's going to look weird. It's going to look like you crammed it in there. This might even be a little big. We'll take it down just a little bit and recenter that center, center. And that looks really nice. So now we're going to grab this whole ensemble here. We're going to copy it. I'm holding the Alt key. So quick copy, hold Alt, click and drag. You can even hold Shift to make sure that it drags in line if you want to keep them centered. And we're gonna get rid of Tony out of this one. So now we have an exact duplicate of our original box. And this one is getting Greg. Greg. Now I happen to know that this is from Greg and to Tony. So Greg, we're gonna let be a little bit smaller, especially because he would like a heart 
uh, added next to his name here. So we're gonna add a little heart here. So we do need to leave just a little bit of extra room for that. Uh, in order to do that, we're gonna jump onto Google. And the first thing we are going to do is type in heart vector. It won't actually give us a vector, but it will give us a shape that's close enough to what we're looking for that we'll be able to trace it in Illustrator. Let's see, how about this one? Great, that looks awesome. Save. And we're just gonna save that to the desktop to find it quickly and easily. And now we have our JPEG. So we can take our JPEG, drag it into Illustrator. Perfect, nice and big. Zoom out a little bit. And we are going to hit image trace, expand, ungroup, select the white and get rid of it, goodbye. Resize the heart to the shape that we want it. And we're gonna just kind of fit it in here next to Greg. We wanna make sure that it's gonna fit nicely on that band. That looks appropriate, right about there. I like that. So we're going to group. So we're gonna group that, and uh, by grouping this, we can now center the entire thing on the box. So center, center, done. Didn't move much, but better safe than sorry. And we're ready to go. So we have our two outline boxes that are guaranteed to fit our uh, gold band, and we have our text done. Both texts have been expanded, so we have the shape of the text, but not the actual type text, and uh, it's ready to save. So we're gonna do file, save as, we're gonna type in a project name. So for this, we'll just call it Tony and Greg. Why not? And we'll save that to the desktop. And we want to save this as a Illustrator version eight. Okay, guys, none of these other file formats are going to work with EasyCAD. So we have to do an Illustrator version eight. So we're gonna select version eight and hit okay. and our file is saved. So we can close out of this. And we're gonna get EasyCAD open. In order to get EasyCAD open, guys, you have to have your machine on first. EasyCAD will not open unless your machine is already on. Uh, so make sure you turn on your machine. All right, guys, with the machine on, we can go ahead and come down here and open EasyCAD. So let's get that open. And here we are in EasyCAD. We can just come over here. We're going to draw our vector file. We're going to navigate to the desktop where we know that our Tony and Greg file is. And we're gonna hit open. Shift and C will bring that directly to the center, right? So there we go. Uh, we only need one of these to start. So we're gonna get rid of Greg and we'll do Tony first. So I'm gonna select everything, Shift, C again. We're gonna control X, cut this box, okay? We wanna select the text that we wanna engrave. We're gonna group it together, group, and then we're gonna hatch it, hatch. Now, if you don't understand what's going on in here, we will do a tutorial on what all of this means uh, in the future, but for now, we have everything set the way that we want it to be set. We're gonna hit okay. And so we've got a hatch now, so the laser is actually going to engrave the body of the letters and not just the outline. We're gonna jump into our parameter library here, and I have a really nice setting called Brash General. It's a very nice, gentle setting, so it'll be nice and gentle on the gold, and we can go as we go, uh, you know, without overdoing it right off the bat with something heavier like a steel or aluminum setting. So we're gonna choose our Brash General here. You can see our speed is about 1500 millimeters a second. We're at 50% power, 25 frequency. Uh, we are on a 30 watt laser for these settings. Okay guys, so we're not on one of those giant, super expensive 50 watt machines, but we're not on one of the piddly little 10 watts either. Okay, we're in the middle of the road. It's usually the best way to go. Um, and you just want to, you know, do what you have to do to, to get a similar mark. Obviously the best way to go about this would be to get a piece of gold and do some tests and get some settings. But if you're on a 30 watt machine, these should get you really close. Okay, moving on. So the next thing that we wanna do is we wanna hit light down here. 
and we're going to light up that text and make sure that the text is going to go where we want. Uh, we can actually paste that border box back in real quick and we can control X, cut Tony instead, and we will light the box. All right, so now that we have our box, we can really position this exactly where we want it. Um, you can sit here and measure all day uh, and try to get things perfect if you want, but in my experience, they don't craft things like this perfectly symmetrically anyway, so it's better to just use your eye. Uh, hopefully you have a good eye for this and uh, you can get that feeling nice and center. We're gonna light it again as well with the text just to make sure things really do look centered on that band. Uh, but I'm happy with that so far, so let's hit escape. We're gonna control V, paste our Tony back in, control X, get rid of our box, and light again. And now you can see there's Tony, and it's, it's looking really good right where we have it. So we're gonna run it. So for this brass setting, we are going to do just one pass at a time. We do not want to overdo this. This total number here is how many times it's going to run. We want one. Okay, guys? And when we are ready, we are going to hit mark. Okay, so our bracelet didn't like explode or melt or burst into flames, uh, so we can actually give it a couple more passes just to toughen up that engraving a little bit. So let's set our total number of passes to three. We'll reset our part number here, and we will mark. So that's looking really nice, but I think we can clean it up a little bit. So we're going to jump back into EasyCAD. And we're going to go to our parameter library and we are going to find my steel white finish setting. This is 762 by 25 by 45. Okay, 762 by 25 by 45. And this is going to give us a nice clean white finish on our text. So. We're just going to reset this, set our total number to 1, and mark again. And look at that, guys. That looks really, really great. So now all we have to do is turn this over and repeat on the back side for the heart. All right, guys, so I've gone ahead and flipped the bracelet over. We do need to refocus because now our point of focus is lower than it was when we started. So you just wanna grab your uh, focusing stick. If you don't have one of these or you don't know what it is, don't worry, we will do a tutorial on that soon. Uh, but for now, just for the sake of moving forward, we're gonna grab our focal stick and we're just going to adjust our focus down. Let's make sure you can see that there until we are nice and close to the surface of that gold. That looks pretty good right there. And same thing, okay? We just want to paste in our box, cut out our text, light the box, line the box up, okay? Now that we have everything lined up, we're just going to import our file again. Shift C to bring it to the center without having to zoom out. And we already did Tony, so we don't want to do Tony again, right? So let's just delete that. We already have a box. We don't need a new box. We can delete that too. Here's what we are engraving. We can group hatch. We'll just hit OK because our hatch is good. Shift C to bring it to the center. And we are going to select from our parameter library brass because we know that works. And we're going to set our part number to four because that's the number of runs we did on the first side, okay? All that's left to do, we've already centered the box, we can delete the box, is light the text. Make sure everything looks good on the text, make sure that everything feels center, and it does, it looks great to me, so we're gonna go ahead in our software here and hit mark. You see that we missed focus just a little bit on that heart, so while it was running, I actually raised our focal point just like a millimeter, a tiny little millimeter while it was running. 
When we do that, it's called live focusing. And you want to be really careful when you're live focusing because I've ruined projects that way. So um, now that we know we're in focus and we're through our four passes on the brass, we are going to just load in that steel white finish setting again and mark one last time to clean that up. All right, guys, now because we are working with gold here, uh, not a stronger metal like aluminum or steel, we want to stay away from this nasty stuff, okay? No Zep, no Windex, no alcohol. We're not doing any of that. Get a clean, dry microfiber towel. If you don't have these, there's a link in the description to pick them up from Amazon. They cost nothing. So here's our gold bracelet, guys. Here's our clean, dry microfiber cloth. I'm just gonna kind of pinch it on one end here. And we're just gonna give it a couple wipes in one direction, we'll flip it over, give it a couple wipes in the other direction, and we're done, okay? There's the final engraving on the back. We've got Greg with our heart as the requ customer requested. And in the front, we've got our Tony, right? Everything's still nice and shiny. We didn't hurt the bracelet, and now we can call and have a happy customer come and pick up their gold bracelet. All right, guys, I have a very happy customer that I need to go call right now. But if this video provided some value for you, if you found it entertaining, if it was helpful, give it a thumbs up. Uh, hit that like button, okay? And uh, if you want to see more stuff like this, subscribe because I plan on posting these videos very regularly. So uh, subscribe, hit the little bell icon so you get notified when we post a new video. And until then, I'll see you guys next time.